Today is Sunday, the 26th of November, and it's my last day back tomorrow morning. I'm leaving back home, and uh, I still have a lot of plans for today. So right now we are going back to the donut station because uh, my teacher from yesterday is giving a workshop about sculpting hands and feet. They will give also a short workshop about making doll shoes for the same kind of fit we made yesterday. And then I'm going to go to the doll museum in Prague. And I promise you it's going to be really interesting because I've been there already twice and it's really worth it to see. Um, this one was supposed to be a ballerina slipper. So I want to make this into a ballerina slipper. Mm -hmm. If I want to make a ballerina slipper, there is no need in building the complete shoe around it. The only thing I have to do is I make a very thin worm of clay. So I make a very thin worm. I wet the spot where I want to have the edge of the ballerina. And then I lay this worm on the edge. take a sculpting tool and now I'm going to attach this worm to the shoe uh, only towards the outside so not not uh, to the leg in the direction of the leg but only here And then with a wet finger I can make this smoother. you can uh, decide uh, to add a strip to the to the ballerina shoe right here. and then you have made a shoe without without making a shoe okay what should we see Again. Yeah, I don't, I don't make wheels. I don't make wheels. I, I make easy. So it was the workshop, and for now I think I can be free from this doll exhibition. And now let's see some Prague fights. We're staying now in the middle of the old city, and I remember when I came to Prague for the very first time, I was completely, I was completely impressed with this place. So much not normal. Like, you know, Prague is also quite a special place for me. Oh, look, 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 look. <laughs> And so when I came to the Prague for the very first time in my life, it's a little bit more farther than tell you my story meanwhile uh, I was I think 21 or 22 years old I just graduated from the university and just started to work and I got my first money and I've decided that now I'm already grown up enough to organize my own dream and do everything completely on my own without using any travel agencies or whatever and then I came to Prague completely myself on my own completely alone so, and it was for the very first time when I've done something like this completely alone without, without anybody because normally I was always traveling or with my best friend or with some travel agencies and then it's of course a little bit different kind of experience but when you're going to get into abroad for the very first time 
completely alone and it's such a big and pretty city here of course getting <laughs> completely wild oh look at here is a really Christmas market maybe later I will get here drink some hot wine or something but it's definitely just two o'clock in the afternoon right now so it's a little bit too early for me to drink to drink alcohol ah, and by the way i have no idea where is this doll museum right now because last night because last night it was already like three o'clock at night i suddenly got an idea that i should check the working hours of the doll museum because it's sunday yeah normally doll museums do work on sunday but who knows and it was very smart i can tell you because when i opened the website of the doll museum the first thing i've seen that they're moved to completely different place like the completely different another bank of the river so <laughs> if i would go now take first metro then a tram then do a piece of food to do all these like medieval staircases and then they ended up in front of the closed door because the building is under the reconstruction <laughs> i would probably freak out but luckily now i know where it is it should be somewhere in the neighborhood it should be somewhere in the halfway to the charles bridge so now we're in the most touristic place of Prague you see the road to the famous Charles Bridge I think after the museum we'll, we'll take a look there to see what is going on but I know what is going on beggars are begging artists are painting tourists are making pictures and Prague just looks good but anyway let's take a look and I think we're somewhere close to it this is how it starts it looks already very good of course here as I remember here we could see like all kinds of toys like look in this room, you can see all kind of old train houses from the years, from the end of 19, beginning of the 20th century. Oh, by the way, this is from the Netherlands. Look, it's Dutch, Uitgang, Ingang, Rotterdam. And here are the dolls. Oh, and this one. You know, many people say that they're afraid of dolls, they're like freaking out from seeing too realistic dolls. But when you see like these kind of dolls, I can understand their frustration in some way. <laughs> oh, look at these ones. And this, and this wedding couple. And this tiny dolls. Um, this is, and this is a zoo. Look at a huge one. It would be wild if I got such a zoo when I was when I was a kid. Look at all these animals. Look at, look at this teddy bear with the, his bike. And it's absolutely crazy that it comes from from 1930s. It's like 80 almost 90 years old and of course yeah these are the toys of the 20th century so yeah you cannot avoid the war topic even in, in toys you can see here all kinds of military machines completely burned houses look at this i think it's I think it's quite scary and also impressive and you see here all these little soldiers many of them are injured or dying or friends are carrying friends are helping carrying their fr friends you know when we're talking about this Mozart tema that I was not happy about the Mozart tema of the doll exhibition uh, this is what I was like missing. This is what I called something actual and contemporary. Yes, these dolls are, these toys are from the period of the First World War. But look, this works better 
then just some pretty dressed up dolls with white curls, blonde and with pink lips. This what speaks more for for me now because look what is going on in the in the world and we are talking about that. And here we can see all kinds of robots. And here are the Star Wars and the Star Trek characters. I'm not I'm actually I'm not like okay, Star Wars I have watched probably some two episodes in total, but about Star Trek I know just nothing zero. <laughs> it's probably like falling from another planet. But I know that many people are really huge fans huge fans of these stories. And here they are. I know I this will probably say more to you than to And me. here we have another character, Toys. The bad girl. The Shrek. His donkey. The Superman. And Charlie Chaplin. Oh, Charlie Chaplin is my thing. I'm like always, you know, I know done nothing about contemporary things, but yeah, Charlie Chaplin. Here. And here we can see all kinds of like kitchen facilities from the beginning of the 20th century. Look at all these pans and pots and dishes and forks and everything. And it's all coming from the beginning of the 20th century, I begin. Look how cute it is all. I guess it's all like real porcelain things. And copper probably. So yeah, I think everybody would be wild as a kid about having something like this. Look, it's so realistic, it's so detailed. And it's quite big, I would say it's... Oh yeah, bigger than Monster High size. It's like this doll size about... 40 centim first, yeah, 40 centimeter high dolls, I would say. And look at these cute tiny things. And here are the doll houses. And the little creepy babies are having a bath there. Oh, and look, and this one is flying. This is also, oh, look, this is the first BJD's probably. Look at her joints. Look at her knees and the hips. And the hands, there's also something going on. Oh, this is something special. And look at these tiny soaps. And then this blackie, so cute. And there are also the doll houses. And you can see, I don't know if you can see. Look at that doll house. There are also even tiny soldiers on the floor. In the beds there are laying kids and on the floor there are tiny tiny soldiers and the paintings on the wall and everything and the cat cat you know cannot miss a cat hello cat and here we have the Christmas markets like you've just seen outside in Prague look the, the tiny lady is selling all kinds of Christmas decorations Christmas decorations also includes Super, super tiny. Christmas trees and some spooky animals are playing music. And here is another lady selling candies and candles and chocolate. Yeah, so it's again a dollhouse, and here we can see it's a Christmas installation, dollhouse. The kids are, these kids they have on the Christmas tree. And here's some farm to play with. And there is, look there, is a tiny microscope stain. <laughs> How cute it can be. And there is domino stones, look, in the closet. And there is the clock. That is for sure very cool and very detailed. And here is a Barbie doll star. This is actually the main goal of, of being here. 
let's start from the beginning look this one in the middle this is barber number one made in usa in 1959 and next to it is a barber number two also 1959 and by the number three is also from 1990-1959 but uh, the story here says uh, that these dolls were made with such a kind of plastic that was very quickly changing their color like for example uh, doll number one and three has changed their color already in the first year. They became more ivory or white, it depends on the light, how the light was in the room where they've been. So when we are now looking at these old Barbie dolls and thinking like, oh, why do they look so gray and pale and ivory, some kind of dead body color. They, 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 they used to be actually normal skin, skin color ones, but uh, yeah, unfortunately they have changed their color very quickly and this is what we have now. And this doll was kind of a prototype of Barbie doll because it was made before, it was made in 1955, says here the information. So, and it was kind of a revolutionary thing on the market. Because for the first time, we came from these dolls to these dolls. That's of course a revolution. I remember how this revolution has happened to me when I used to be a kid. You know, I was I was born still in in the Soviet Union. Look at this! Look at these fishes. They look almost real. Huh? These ones are cool. So. When I was when I was born in the Soviet Union, it was of course a little bit the end of Soviet Union, but still, it was quite an isolated country, and we absolutely had no Barbie dolls or other kinds of fashion dolls. We had just like this old-fashioned one that existed in Europe and America before before Barbie dolls, before 1955. And um, I had absolutely no idea that these kind of fashion dolls even exist in the world. Of course, we couldn't go abroad. It was a completely isolated country. Nobody could go abroad. Nobody could get you know, any publicity or newspapers or magazines from abroad. And we just had no idea that such a thing even does exist. And then when I was six years old, mom of my best friend, uh, went to Paris for some reason. I have no idea how we actually managed to go to Paris from Soviet Union in 1990. Uh, but from there she has brought a Barbie doll for her. And then I remember it completely turned my world. It's completely like changed, changed my universe. I completely had no idea that it was even possible that something like it's like you can imagine like if now somebody will fly to Mars and bring from there something that can you know, help you to transport instantly 500 kilometers away and you will be like whoa is it really possible <laughs> something like this can exist and it was with, with this Barbie dolls from Paris it was exactly the same for me when I've seen it for the first time I literally I, I couldn't eat I couldn't sleep I couldn't study I couldn't play with my own dolls I was just I have a little pain on my arm from this camera, can you imagine? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was completely obsessed by this doll. I remember that I was even, even like, laying, laying night in my bed as a kid of six years old, and I was, I couldn't sleep. I was thinking, oh, I wonder if my mom now will get up and give me as a gift to this Barbie doll. Maybe she has got it from somewhere and now it's laying somewhere in another room hidden like a Christmas gift or something like this. So it was, it was serious, I was seriously impressed. So I understand these people who were also seriously impressed when the first Barbie dolls or these prototypes of the Barbie dolls were released on the market. Uh, because it's for sure, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong impression for, for unprepared young minds. So, let's, it was a little bit of my story about how, why I love dolls and why it's so important for me still, uh, even as a grown-up person. Here we have all kind of 
are unique and never produced avant-garde fashion designs Barbie from the 80s you know in the 80s it was popular all these avant-garde things and here we can see them I think it's made from with this foam paper you know so by the way you can also make something like this for our dolls <laughs> And here we see the main character from the birds. And here we see Harry Potter. And uh, here is James Bond. Oh my god, James Bond looks like he's dying there. Look, look at his face. <laughs> it looks like he's 70 years old and he's like having a heart attack right now. And here is a girlfriend. And um, there is the ghost of the ghost of the opera, actually yeah, the, the, the father of Operetta doll. See with the scars on his face hidden under his mask. Oh, there, there where it starts. And here is Abby Presley sweating. Oh my God! Look, so here is an original. Abby Presley wedding picture. And here are the Barbie dolls demonstrating Elvis Presley wedding. It looks pretty cool here, it looks similar, you know, Barbie dolls, like this character Barbie dolls are, they're not really, <laughs> normally they don't really look like the, the prototypes, like the people, but this one, so, yeah, Elvis Presley still looks like Elvis Presley, it's probably easy to make Elvis Presley. And here we have uh, all kinds of sport Barbie. Here are the cheerleaders girls and the soccer player and the figure skaters. Oh, the figure skaters look creepy. Hello, figure skaters. What's wrong with you? Uh, they look like some evil witches, like the evil sisters of Cinderella. And here is uh, Michael Jordan, really huge. Maybe some Michael Jordan, yeah, it's some basketball player, okay, I don't know anything about it, so I will not make myself ridiculous. And here are also some Olympic champions of Atlanta, I guess, um, look, this is all the Atlanta Olympic Games in 1996. And here are the Barbie dolls, Barbie outfits, made by the most famous world design, fashion designers in the world. Uh, you can see here uh, the dress of, of Yves Saint Laurent, Kenzo, Nina Ricci, Christian Dior. Like this one is in the middle. This is a Christian Dior Barbie. This one in a hat and in a blue black skirt. And uh, Christian Lacroix, Pierre Cardin, Guilla Rocha, Oscar de la Renta. So all of them are here. It's a pity that you cannot see really everywhere and there's the Avon Barbie so <laughs> something else sometimes you cannot really see who are the designers oh, and this is a porcelain and these are the porcelain Barbies this one in the lace dresses This one will be Kurt Lagerfeld Barbie, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just guess. Ah, yeah, voila, see. Barbie Kurt Lagerfeld, it says here in the bottom. This one is cool, this one I like. Oh, and by the way, my, my Barbie dolls had the same fur jackets. You can see, I, I made like half a year ago for the Mother's Day in May. I used to make a video about my first Barbie doll making the dresses made by my mama. We'll leave a link under this video somewhere on top or in the description box. And my Barbie doll had a very, very, very similar fur mantle. Oh, it's cool to see. Look at all these fashionistas. Winter in Montreal collection. Summer in Rome. 
oh, and here we see, uh, yeah, this is what I was telling about, that normally Barbie dolls don't really look like the, the human prototypes. This one suddenly appeared to be Naomi Campbell. Yeah, nice to, nice to meet you, Naomi Campbell. I still thought you looked a little bit different. And this one, who, what do you think, who is, who is this one? Yes, exactly, it's Claudia Schiffer. <laughs> but yeah. There are some problems in Mattel with making portrait dolls. They should hire some of, of YouTube artists or Instagram doll artists. They will make it better, I think. Uh -huh, and here we're back to, to the history. And we can see the Barbies from the 80s. You can see this typical 80s style. By the way, it's a good inspiration for later to make doll clothes. It's really pretty. Oh, where, where are my other parts? You know, I have like some groups of, 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 of people on my channel that are starting to yell about doll nudity. I don't know what kind of, what, what level of sexual frustration you should have if you're like looking at the doll as a source of, of nudity, as a sexual object. So it's also for you, for the doll nudity lovers. And these are the Barbies from the 60s. And you can see this absolutely iconic swimwear costume. And this dress, this one with balls, it's also absolutely iconic if you, for example, will Google some Barbie doll dress patterns, you will find millions of these ones, of this black one with colorful dots. It's really like a classic of, of Barbie outfits. Oh, look at this one. This one is pregnant. I remember my friend used to have such a pregnant Barbie with her kids. Yeah, it was fun to play with because when you're little, it's all interesting, everything about family and kids and everything. And here we have a Christian Lampton dolls. Wow, look here. Or it's just a box from his shoes, but anyway, I think it's, it's Lampton related. So, so look at these rockers. Look at these rockers. The rockers are cool. Oh, the leather jackets are just amazing. And the back as well. And there is a Harley Davidson logo on her back. It's probably impossibly difficult to see. And since 1961, Barbie had got her boyfriend. His name was Ken, of course. It's not changed. So, and here we can see how the first Ken looked like. Uh, to me, they look like also like they're 70 years old, uh, very tired. Staying in the hospital, <laughs> something like this. No, anyway, Barbies of that times were not that that pretty as well. Look at them. But anyway, I understand that for that times it was for sure a re revolution. Like I told it already, it's for sure something mind blowing. I never thought that the dolls dolls can have such a model kind of body, and they can posing. And, and here is also the whole collection of Barbie dolls from 1965 with bendable legs. I can imagine that bendable legs has become even a bigger revolution than just a fashion Barbie doll. And this was the very first VIP doll in the Barbie world. Uh, these dolls it were Casey and Twiggy. Uh, yeah, they had approximately the same face, <laughs> the dolls, I mean, not the, the models. The Casey and Twiggy, they were absolutely iconic fashion models of uh, the late 60s. Uh, yeah, here there is no really difference between Casey, look, the black one is Casey, the white blonde one is Twiggy. Casey, Twiggy, Casey, Twiggy, can you see the difference? Not really. And here we have a Barbie and Skipper school. No, you know, this kind of furniture is already closer to what Mattel does now. Everything is cartoned, everything is cheap, everything is not really... Like, yeah. 
trustworthy. But anyway, doll school. Everybody was dream about the doll school, and he's a, and he's a kid. And here and here and here. Oh look, this is a special 40th and yeah, the 40th anniversary Barbie. Oh, and this one is really pretty. I like her lip color. I like the flowers. I like the dress. Yeah, this one is a pretty one. And here you can see the monkey, the monkey Barbies, the Catwoman Barbie, the Coca-Cola after the walk Barbies, and here are more Coca-Cola Barbies. And there is a Barbie with some weird changeable flip face you can see. All. What is this? I know there is no description, but the whole the whole company here is a Wizard of Oz company. But who is this doll with a changeable face? I cannot even imagine. And here is the Hollywood Legends collection. You can see Audrey Hepburn, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley again, and Elvis Presley again, and Elvis Presley. One more time, so we've seen already four Elvis Presleys today, and Marilyn Monroe, and somebody I don't really know and understand, James Dean, I believe, there. And here are the Snow White Barbie. By the way, we have the Snow White Barbie look before and how the Disney Princess is Snow White Barbies look now. I think there is some difference in it. And we are almost there. We have just the one, the one thing to see. And here is the President of the United States of America. Uh, Mr. Trump is not here yet, though, thank God. But they have here all kinds of George Bushes. And James Bond looks a little bit better than the previous one. At least he doesn't look like he has a heart attack. And here is a Bill Clinton, and this is, I guess, a Princess Diana next to him. And Ronald Reagan. And there is again James Bond story, and of course, Sir the Abraham Lincoln. So I think we've seen kind of everything here. And now let's take a short walk at some Charles Bridge and to see a little bit of Prague. Because it's enough of dolls for, the, for this weekend. I already three dolls getting constant doll injections. So <laughs> let's do something else. Let's go for a walk. like it is. You see before the doll museum used to be there where this high castle is. It's good that I it's good that I've managed to <laughs> figure it out that it's moved to a completely another place. Old bridge, the old castle and this is Prague. This is the Charles Bridge with thousands of tourists with Moy oh, Moy yeah, with Moy Stan building, that's the Netherlands Acres <laughs> with pretty sculptures of all kinds of saints 
of the Patreon, so the city of Prague. And here, of course, like in all touristic places, you can see all kinds of artists drawing, painting, sketching, making juries, everything, everything, everything. At the Charles Bridge again, probably already for okay, maybe not the 20th, but the 15th time I'm here. But it's still cool, it's still pretty, it's still exciting, it's still nice to be here, even though I'm trying normally to avoid a little bit such touristic places. Because I just don't like to be in a crowd of people, and also such places you always have a feeling that they can just feel everything from you, just everything, just for, take it from your hands and run. So, I'm of course trying to avoid such a touristic places, but when you're in the city of Prague, it's just stupid to, to avoid touristic places because it's just one big touristic place. So I will probably go sit somewhere, drink something warm because it's pretty cold today. I think it's like one degree or something. And tomorrow I will be home back to my dolls full of inspiration. We'll buy a lot of clay and start sculpting things so I think there are lots of exciting projects and exciting creations and will come in the near future maybe not in such near future in the future because of course sculpting dolls it's not something that you can learn in one week or even one month or after a couple of lessons yeah so I'm I'm happy, I'm happy to be here, I'm happy I joined this uh, doll exhibition, I see you in my next videos, it was very exciting for me to, to, make, to film these vlogs for these three days, I think I will make it even more often in the future, and now I will go drink something warm, some tea, and then go shopping, now it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I still have a couple of hours just to to be free, just to be a tourist in this city, to walk, to do shopping, to eat, to drink, and to prepare to go back home. So, bye.